Good afternoon, Speed Gaming, and welcome. We are in the early stages of round one of the playoffs of the Invitational League. And today we've got a special treat for you. This is game two, technically, between uh, your mom's favorite rando team and Bottles on Empty. But here's a little twist. This is actually going to be a back-to-back -back double header this, this afternoon. Game two being played first of the spo Spoiler Pilot Keys with game one, which I believe is going to be a co-op retrance happening, or sorry, no, it's just an AD happening uh, at about 2.30 today. So gonna be a slight break between the races, and then we'll get a game, a second game between these two teams. I'm Radical Sniper 99 joined today by Blue Link with Link Force on the tracking. Hello, Blue Link. Hello. I'm excited for some more spy spoiler nonsense, and um, yeah, we're going to be getting started any second now, it appears. Yeah, so if you haven't uh, heard anything or seen the playoffs or the league settings for this, uh, playoffs is a best of three series where every race is going to be um, co-op. So you got four modes to choose from, Pilot Spoiler, Co-op Retrance, Co-op AD, or Co-op Animizer with Starting Boots. So three of those modes were seen during the regular season, uh, Co-op Retrance being the one new wrinkle to it, but we had seen that last season as a regular season mode as well. So today we've got a Gamma Chew running for your mom's favorite rando team, Ninjembro, running for Bottles on Empty, and um, the pilots will be Fear Agent for your mom's, and um, Maximum Barnage is piloting for bottles. It looked like we had some momentary divergence, but uh, Gamma Chu just turned around and is following Njumpro into the Lost Woods. Yeah, the uh, so you can see that Njumpro getting that uh, bush crab for his bombs. Well, that's a good reason to go in there. That is a glove. But um, what we can also say is Njumpro getting... Um, each runner kind of taking a different priority there for their bombs. I like what Ninjembro did with that bush crab. That is actually info in the spoiler log, knowing that the regular drop is bombs and that the special drop after what five or six of those was the eight pack. So able to get up to 10 bombs very nicely. Whereas Gamma used the uh, tier pull, which is also in the spoiler log. Yeah, that's very good information for the pilot to pull out early because. You don't want to be wandering around looking for bombs when you can just get them for free. Exactly. Nice free bottle there. Two free bottles. What? That's suspicious. One of them was only, only one of them was empty, though. There's the big prize. 300 rupees. And a cape. Oh, no. A cape? I, I'm a little uh, concerned about an early cape. But yeah, so if you haven't ever seen Pilot Spoiler, um, all the information is in the log. That's dungeon prizes, key locations, item locations, all that kind of stuff. Looks like we are getting a little bit of divergence for real now. Uh, Gamachu headed into the back of Escape, while Ninjumbro heads over to Saha and possibly Eastern. Yeah, as you can see, uh, we do have some markings of crystals and pendants as we get a sword and a big key. I believe that was the Thieves Town. Meanwhile, Saha, just some money, the bow, okay, and some arrows. And it looks like you are right. We are going to see a continuation into Eastern Palace. But yeah, um, shout out to Link Force filling in all that de those details on the crystals, pendants, as well as medallions. That is, of course, information all in the log, so we're able to know that very quickly. So either the big key to Eastern is in Eastern, or there's something in here we really want to have early on. Yeah, this could be a guaranteed double dip, and we're just having to come in here now. Uh, so the way this mode works is Gamma and Fear are in a voice call, and Ninjembro and Barninger are in a voice call together. 
um, <clears throat> right at the word go. So as soon as the clock hit, you know, go, um, both of our, oh, that's why we had to go into Eastern. That is a mirror. Um, <clears throat> both of our uh, runners started moving and the pilots were given the spoiler log. So they are in a mad dash to try to analyze that spoiler log and find out a path for their runner. So Mini Moldurm Cave just had some bombs, a red boomerang, and 300 rupees, putting uh, Gamachu at a very interesting rupee count. We're seeing a fake flipper, probably uh, heading to Zora right now. Yeah, without a pearl, the uh, this play into like waterfalls out of the question. So this is definitely this has to be Zora. I will say Ninjembro getting a little bit of a, an advantage in some regards, getting that early full magic drop. And, you know, we I thought maybe we could see an Aga. Um, we've got the cape to get in there, so we could get the item. But what is it that Gamma is going to get here off of the scam fish? Or the unlikely scam? Well, we'll find out in a second. Ninjembro is paying a visit to Uncle for an armor upgrade. And those are oh, our wow. Titan's myths. Okay. All right, so Gamachu probably going to go pick up that bow and mirror. And Ninjumbro is venturing into Hyrule Castle. Or no, he's going to Castle Tower. Honestly, I, I have to say, you know, the full magic drop for Ninjembro is nice in some regards. Uh, really does help him out um, getting into Aga Tower here. Gamma getting that little magic there also means he's fine. And Ninjembro burning through all of his arrows just to get through those ball and chain guards. This is going to be an interesting pickup here. A shovel. That's right, folks. We just got a shovel out of Aga Tower. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah, that is an important shovel. Yeah, I will say the blue mail pickup for Ninjembro is quite interesting. Um, not sure if we'll, you know, need... Um... The extra armor but it is a nice little safety especially when you know you never know how many heart containers you're really going to find and given we had to head into hyrule castle just to get that shovel for pearl i don't hate it yeah because the thing that's going to cost you more time than picking up the armor is not picking up picking it up and then dying at a inopportune time yeah and Gam is actually going to go farther into Eastern, um, so a bit of divergence on even the Eastern play. This is interesting. There is something interesting here in the big key chest. I was wondering if we were going to get to see it from either runner. Well, I think what we might see happen is, is that Ninjember is going to wait for this play. Like, I'll reserve judgment because I didn't check the log to see what this is but my guess is this is something Ninjembro might return for later depending on timing whereas you know I, I, I'm not sure I love the investment here like if this is boots or a flute I think I'm going to be a little bit more in favor of Gamma doing this play but if yeah. this is just a key for something down the line I'm not sure I'm in love with the play So this might tell us that the Eastern Big Key is buried really deep, potentially, because otherwise I don't understand why you wouldn't just go do this when you're coming to complete the dungeon. Yeah, this is a this is a long run for uh, Gamma. This is but this is a large time investment walk for this chest, um, especially if like unless this was the Big Key, and if it was, I feel like Ninjembro would have done this as well. That's silvers. Okay, that's not a bad find. I just... 
That's interesting. We are going to see the waterfall here. Piece of heart and a heart container. Not a big gain for Ninjembro there. The heart container's nice. So yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll be curious to see how our, like, I think you're right on this one, is like, where is our Eastern Big Key? You know, is this going to be one of the last dungeons we complete? So I look and I see, hey, we've got Mire in there as a crystal. You know, am I going to be able to get Silvers before Vitreus? Or, you know, is it worse than that? So... And we do see uh, Gamma getting the little magics as well as the blue mail and those 50 rupees. And yeah, I will say, um, you know, we were, uh, there was some talk about, you know, Gamma not swimming up to Zora and not having the pearl to do a water walk state ninjembro having that water walk state is very important there um walking on the water means he didn't have to worry about navigating through the zora's domain which did save him time yeah we can see ninjembro on his way to the dark world right now while gamachu's picking up that shovel And yes, uh, in chat there, Telethar is right. Uh, swimming or f swimming is faster than walking. Uh, the only worry is, is that, you know, depending on how confident you are, that can be a very dangerous swim. And we're into Thieves Town. We do have that big key. And okay. That's we have nice a hammer. One. Yeah. Does look like that might be our only item in the front as Ninjembro is immediately heading for the back. And no small key, so likely not important. So yeah, what I will say, since this is the first game between these two teams, uh, your mom's favorite rando team was in the Kakariko division, finishing the regular season with a 10-4. During Pilot Spoiler Week, Gamma was piloted by Fear, defeating Jet and Megawatt. Um, so they definitely had a, a good run in there. Um, meanwhile, Team Bottles on Empty was part of our Lost Woods division, finishing 9-5 and five in the regular season. In terms of their Pilot Spoiler Week, it was Ninjembro being piloted by N Maximum Barnage, and they also got a win against Killer App and Adirondack Rick. So these teams are quite comfortable uh, in this arrangement, that's for sure. Um, team, your mom's favorite rando team is the high seed. So they got mode pick for game one. Uh, this m game was picked by Ninjembro and Bottles on Empty. Yeah, that's the only reason that this is technically game two out of the best of three. Because um, otherwise, for all practical purposes, it is game one. Yeah. Uh, games one and three will be picked by the high seed. Low seed will pick game two. So yes, today um, this is game two by pick mode or mode pick. Uh, whereas the uh, the high seed, your, your mom's picked AD for their game. Um, all three pairs, of course, will have to get used during the series uh, if it goes the distance. So it's, for this game, we are seeing the gamma fear combination. And we are seeing the Ninjembro maximum barnage combination. Hey, that's a small key on the bumper. As we also got a book of Medora off of Blind Cell. And we're into our first crystal boss uh, with a blind. And that's a small key to Turtle Rock. We will need Not at least three of those to finish this. Okay, so Gamachu's heading up the mountain now.
Worst case, you are setting up the save and quit point, so... But I have to imagine there's something more important up here that was locked by that hammer. Uh, that is crystal number one for Ninjembro as he takes down blind. Just 14 minutes into this race. Yeah, these this mode is a faster one. Um, oh, there's our ice rod. Okay. Um, yeah, so, you know, talking about mode length for this... Um, Realistically, um, this mode is about an hour, all told. Um, the co-op AD and co-op Enemizer, I would say roughly in that 80 to 90. Oh my gosh, please. Oh, that boulder was out for Gamma and really heads up use of the Kate. I wasn't sure if Gamma was gonna get that uh that cape off because that cape does have delay in its activation time, and I really thought he was gonna get caught by that one, but the the uh the clover's in full effect today. <laughs> Alright, we're dipping into Hera. Okay, Bombos is needed. That's our entry to both Meyer and TR. Could even be required for something in Ice Palace, depending on the uh, the rule of fire tonight for today. And I'll be curious about that book. You know, we did pick it up. Um. Could that be required entry for desert for something? Could that be a tablet? Obviously, we don't have the sword for it yet. Oh, hey, hey, there's the booties. And a sword, okay. And actually, Ninjembro is going to wait on uh, heading into Hera. All right, we're going to see some Dark Death Mountain stuff from Gamachu. Um, he can open the front door to TR, but can't do anything beyond that. Yeah, meanwhile, Ninjembro is definitely not going to be uh, opening up TR. He does get another piece of heart and hits up to his fifth uh, heart total. So Ninjambro doing a little bit with the uh, the health pickup for safety. I wouldn't say it's been out of his way either. I think the overall routes kind of helped him with that. And having not picked up Bombos yet, Ninjambro is going to take the portal at the bottom of the mountain. And our runners are going to converge on Super Bunny Cave. Yeah, well, as we're st starting to hit this um, nearly, uh, okay, there's our flute. So the book not required for getting into desert at all. And there's our pod big key. And yeah, Ninjembro is not done yet here on the mountain. Okay, so that sequencing means Ninjembro can pick up this um, mystery Palace of Darkness small key off the Ether tablet. <laughs> okay. Depending course, on where the other five are, it could be a really nice little bonus for him. 
Yeah, we've seen Ninjembro decline to pick up the TR Smolky that was on um, Bumper Ledge earlier, so some of these dungeons might give us some options with which keys we end up picking up. Well, and I'll be curious if, like, the way Ninjembro handles that is he tries to route in um, Graveyard Ledge or, or, sorry, uh, Graveyard or King in that regard, like definitely could take that time to hit one of those uh the boots locations or some of the other north dark world at the same time yeah that's a good point because yeah i mean with with requiring three of those small keys i have to imagine he's got a plan or like Barnage is getting to the point where he's got that plan of like, this is the keys we're going to get. Like 20 minutes is roughly that time where, you know, a pilot is starting to have most of these things figured out or at least some broad strokes. But we are going to see the Meyer area here from Ninjembro. Okay, not going to act open mire yet. We are going to touch Desert Palace for something. Oh, that was the GT big key I missed in Thieves. Okay. Okay, missed that too. So, um, it's also worth mentioning that the flippers are on Desert Ledge, which Ninjumbo did not pick up. Uh, Swamp and Ice are two pendant dungeons. So we're not going to need to go into Swamp, it seems, and if we do need to go to Ice, apparently it wasn't worth picking up the flippers. And all we wanted out of Desert was that Pod Small, so... Two Pod Smalls. Appears to be enough for Ninjembro to say, let us go and do this dungeon. And I gotta wonder, you know, is this gonna be a play to say um, I'm gonna beat Eastern here as well? Because this is this is always a lot of extra work going through the pod maze. So maybe the Eastern biggest here. Uh, well, having looked um, and seen where that big key is, I can tell you it is not in pod. Oh boy. In fact, it's somewhere particularly nasty. So it's locked by pod. <laughs> yes, yes, it is. <laughs> Gamma breaking out that cape to deal with the end of his blind fight. Very nice. That ties up the dungeons and there's the desert big key. That's right. Oh, no. Oh, no. Desert being our green pendant today. So we dipped we dipped desert for a, a pod small. Not completely unreasonable, although there's our third sword. Very nice. And we're actually going to the back of pod with only two keys. Oh, no. Is there a third key back here is the question, or are we going to have to double dip pod as well? No, there is a small key to pod, of course. Well, it seems like a little bit of a miscommunication on Bottles and Empty side, but they seem to have things solved. And it looks like we are going to, yep, we are heading in for the Hammer Yump. Um, Ninjebro just making sure to give himself the south door. Half magic is nice. Uh, chat correcting me on that. So um, Ninjebro was doing that intentionally to reset the bridge um, to do the Hammer Jump. One very required fire rod in the Dark Maze, and it looks like Linden Jumper is going to just go finish off Helma while he's here. Yeah, I can't imagine there's anything else left that we actually need out of this dungeon. 
Like the only chest we're really abandoning would be the uh, Harmless Hellway and the Vanilla Big Key chest. And this is curious, like here's some of that divergence and you know, what kind of a difference this makes is, you know, we saw that um, Ingembro did all of the East Town without the boots, was able to get his book first trip, you know, went into Thieves, got the hammer and beat Thieves to get that book and get the pot small first trip up the mountain while Gamma decided to uh, get, you know, get my hammer, bail, and then head up the mountain to do everything else. So I had boots for thieves. It's a it's an interesting choice. It certainly is, and that means I guess there weren't any other easily accessible pod smalls to get instead of having to go all the way back up the mountain. Uh, so in pod, you did mention we were leaving behind a couple checks. It turns out there are some non-junk items we're actually leaving behind. Uh, okay. Quake for one, and the bug catching net, regrettably. The filet. Oh, so sad. But if you're a member of Bottles on Empty, you don't need the net anyway, because... We keep our bottles on empty. Well, it's right there in the name. Now, we did see Ninjambro pick up a 20. Um... You know, money's not been... I mean, you had to pay for Zora, so there's already quite a bit. But, you know, um, Ninjembro down at uh, 92. So even if we want to potentially get um, an extra potion right now, we would just be able to get a green. Gamma just about able to afford a blue. And both of them conveniently have a nice empty bottle waiting to be filled. Yeah, I mean, we are seeing Gamma a little behind right now, um, but I will be curious if that holds with that TR small key on bumper ledge and how long it stays that way. Uh, Gamma 2 didn't want to pick up Tempered yet, apparently. He'll get it on the way back, I think, or to, to the back to fight Helma. Alright, crystal number two acquired for Ninjembro. And I will say, you know, we I, we were, I was talking about the, uh, or we were talking about the extra bow in um, Eastern Palace Big Key Chest. I have to say, the equipment that we have, that even if that Eastern Big is locked behind Viddy right now, it's not even a scary Viddy fight having Cape and Half Magic. Yeah, that's certainly true. Like, if we didn't have that equipment, I'd kind of be like, okay, that's a big advantage for Gamma, but... You know, it, it's only a slightly faster Viddy kill for Gamma if um, Ninjembro doesn't get the silvers before then. Okay, hopefully Gamma 2 remembers to pick up Temper. Okay, good. Yeah. He's just faking this out. Although that does mean that we're not going to see that right side play of uh, Palace of Darkness. And very quickly, Ninjembro already to the moth fight as Gamma is working through to the basement.
And actually, this will work nicely if he wants to go get that TR smell key. Uh, I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll disagree a little bit. Walking out of Skull Woods is not fun. <laughs> actually, yeah, you're completely way. right. Nicely that done. moth really hanging around those spot those spikes, but does get the fight done for a small key too. Nice. Okay, not really if that helpful. And yes, the hook shot is not required in this seed. If you know how to hover, this is a that's a situation. And as much as I was not a fan of this, apparently Ninjembro is going to run out of Skull Woods. Apparently chat saying uh, both of our runners... Oh, this is why we ran out. We have to get something in the front of Skull Woods. That's our big key to Meyer. Okay. And, and that some is a Mario. Key. Wow. Hey, there's your Meyer starter kit. And actually, if he wanted to leave um, to go get that TR small key, he wouldn't have been able to. Yeah. Still needs two more, which it appears Gamma is up to his three. Uh, Meyer yeah, is Gamma their second five six crystal. Uh, I wonder if that's going to be relevant. And that could have been part of the reason Ninjembro was looking for a little bit more money, knowing, hey, you're going to need 100 rupees later in this race. Very nice Mire 2. And I do realize Gamma is actually really low on arrows right now, only down to 2. And this is a go modable mire. I am very interested to see how uh, how comfy Ninjembro is going to be with this dark mire basement. And the Moth, once again, being a coward, staying up on the spikes, but I gotta say, Gamma having a much stronger fight there. Very well done. Ninjembro, playing one of those little car uh, carnival games, you know, where you just gotta toss something that's really bouncy in onto a target, and he's got it. There we go. Yeah, everybody's got, like, their own little strategy of how to get through that room. I'm I love if I'm in the dark, I like having boots and hookshot personally, but obviously no hook. So we're a little limited there, but nice use of the cape getting through that first room. And yeah, I thought he was going too far to the right as well, unfortunately, but does get it and still has all of his health, has a great amount of magic. So he's going to be able to use that cape to great effect for this fight.
in Chembroom. Very efficiently taking out those eyes using cape strats. Yeah, and he's just going to get a one cycle, a very good clean one cycle uh, with that cape. So Gamma can save a little bit of time with the, the silvers getting a zero, but it's not terribly that much faster. For the Swamp Big Key, so not important there. I guess this is for the, the Pyramid Fairy at this rate. And yeah, this is going to be a very interesting play from Gamma, a very scary play. Um, Gamma heading in to Misery Mire on three hearts. The Madman. Well, our runners are certainly good enough to do this, but you never know when, uh, you know, luck is going to turn against you. So we will see. And that one uh, enemy just getting a little under that beam us, unfortunately. But still a very good uh, Mire 2 on Gamma side as well. Picking up some arrows, good knowledge of the pots. Okay, so Gamachu did not pick up the Ganon's Tower's small key in Dark, uh, Palace of Darkness, and is also not picking up one that was available here in Mire. Might now, be relying on the basement. pot key. Yeah, sounds like a pot key reliance there for Gamma. And there's our green pendant for Ninjembro. And first try on that uh, Samaria block in the dark for Gamma, very clean. Jumper off to turn in that green pendant for something very important. Yeah, maybe Pyramid Fairy was not at all required. It's probably just this uh, this green pendant, and I'm guessing based on the sound of things, this could be our Eastern Big Key. I've just got a feeling. Good call. Yep, there we go. Uh, but Pyramid <laughs> Fairy is actually still required. Oh, good. <laughs> And like I said, those silvers are making quick work of Vitreus. Very, very good. Uh, really nice zero cycle. So Gamma gonna save some time with that fight. So yeah, you did have to dip House of Darkness for your desert big key to beat Lanmo to get your Eastern big key off of the green pendant. So yeah, that is a required double dip or triple dip of this area of the map. So do you think Ninjembro is going to spend the time to get the silvers at this point? I'm trying to think if there's enough value left in them at this rate. Like if I'm if I'm watching this, like my pilot could tell me like you've got time to get them. But the issue is, of course, that the other thing that Jimbro has to do is still get some TR smalls. Like, Gamma is in the lead TR small-wise, which is the bigger requirement here. And I don't blame uh, Team Bottles for skipping out on Silvers. Uh, well, one thing's for sure, Nimjembro was either going to have to go back for that TR small on bumper ledge or more likely go get one from Stumpy. Yeah, and I think that route's in semi-decent with the Pyramid Fairy at this rate. And we get one cycle uh, landmos from both of our runners uh, just in different ways. Ninjembro with the Fire Rod, Gamma with his Silvers. So, yeah. And that's the thing, like, Ninjembro... His Vidi fight was fine with a one cycle. His Armo script here, good as well. So, like, 
he is doing what he needs to without silvers to make sure it's not a big time loss. Yeah, that's for sure. Also, Armos dropping 10 arrows is uh, nice for Ninjumbro, but it's going to be really good for Gamachu. And I mean, what I will also point out is that while Gamp has three TR smalls, he could find the fourth. Um, depending on which, like, if Ninjembro's other TR smalls are the, like, it looks like Stumpy's coming up, and if the other one is available in a way that also routes in for Gamma, then Gamma could have all four and be able to skip the Pokey key in Turtle Rock. So, I don't know if I just missed it, but did Gamachu ever go to Stumpy? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's uh, that was Gamma's third. He did it after, I believe, um, Thieves Town. Okay, that makes sense. And Ninjembro is gonna have to be gonna have to get that bomb. I mean, both of our runners only have enough for one attempt with this, so you're not gonna try to play any risky, you know, bomb dupe strats. <laughs> We're unlikely to see many people try for a bomb dupe here. Oh, the Harabig, of course. That, that, yeah, we're not getting a hookshot, are we? Probably not. Uh, I will say, given the fact that we do not have a hookshot and unlikely to find a hookshot, um, I, I have to point out that the, uh, being able to get the pokey key as your fourth and not having to go to right side, like right side TR is a lot slower without hookshot as well. So Gamma probably in a little bit better of a situation for that. Yeah, I had not thought of that. That's a good point. Uh, so stopping at Catfish for Jumbo, I believe this is the last piece of the puzzle. The TR big? Yeah, that looks like a big key and it is. Two Turtle Rock. Oh, that hookshot is very dastardly. I just looked it up out of curiosity, folks. We'll see if this one gets picked up. In fact, uh, Gamachu not having a GT small might just take the decision out of his hands. Yeah, no, you're... Yeah, spoilers to everybody. Uh, Hookshot's in GT. So we won't discuss where yet. Uh, we're going to let that one play out a little bit longer, but I will say Hookshot is GT locked. Ninjembro choosing to do Hera first. Uh, this saves one mirror transition over doing TR and then Hera. I think. Yes. You know, if, if Ninjembro had a second GT small, I'd be a little bit more... I don't know. No, wait. It would work out fine. Yeah, this is interesting. I'm not sure what the better play is here. And I feel like part of this is going to come down to timing. Like, Ninjembro doesn't have a, a huge lead to work with. 
So there's... He might have enough time to get Hook still. Well, Kamachu's going to start his way up the mountain, and Jumbro is going to get some free red mail off Moldorm for crystal number six. That is a very, very free armor. Um, so pretty easy on the two armor upgrades. And I think the crazy thing is, five hearts and three hearts, down to our last crystal for Ninjembro. Um, Gamma's hearts that we didn't get, he uh, Ninjembro got a fourth piece of heart at one point, uh, and the only container we've picked up was the one in the waterfall. <laughs> Jumbro is going to spend a few seconds opening TR, which Gamachu has already done. I will say, you know, everybody talking about the uh, the the fact that with red mail the. The three hearts is not a big deal. What I will point out is that a GT climb is a very scary thing to do on three hearts because a lot of things are basically trap damage and thus always do one heart. Ninjembro being a very smart individual there, remembering I do not have a hook shot, I must go the slow way here. Uh, so I'm trying to look at the GT key situation on the fly here, and I could be completely wrong, but I think Gamachu still has the option of getting the hookshot. It would just be exceedingly silly if he were to do that. He would have to go left side to get the small key under the pot, then go right side, and then get... Yeah. <laughs> it would be a left-right left right climb. Um, it's not impossible. He'd have the keys to do it. It's just a question of... Do you want to invest that time? Uh, are we still going to keep the hookshot location secret for chat, or can we tell them now? I think we can go with it. It's in the compass room of GT, so that's why we're talking about this keys. Um, we need one key to get to right side through tile room, and then we can pick up the key under the pot after the warp tile. For Gamma, who it appears does not have any GT smalls, he would have to go through... Um, the left side to get the pot key then go back to the right go to compass room get his hook shot and then grab that under pot key after the warp tile um, so oh, I'm sure what he's going to go with Yeah, that would make a lot uh, more sense uh, because there is a small key to GT in tile room <laughs> oh okay <laughs> Uh, I will say, entering Chomps, Gamma was down about 30 seconds. He also had a better Chomp room. Uh, and yeah, you were quite right about how much time that right side TR took. Because uh, this has gotten a lot closer all of a sudden. Yeah, I will say Gamma getting the, uh, the bumper ledge key to climb up Death Mountain really was smart. Um, he routed that key in with his play up the mountain, which we had to climb. So Ninjembro entering the dark maze of, po of TR at the 48 minute mark. We'll see where specifically Gamma is momentarily at the, at the same point. And it looks like Gamma has made up time here in Turtle Rock. And a few seconds made up. Uh, we're down to about 28 second difference. Uh, 
Oh, pardon me, there was another GT Small on Laser Bridge. I don't think anyone's stopping for- well, Ninjembro's definitely not stopping for it. Uh, there was also the Powder on Laser Bridge. And Gamma's gonna pick up the key. Possibly the Powder? Nope, no powder. Not the powder. That's interesting. Okay. Well, I mean, that's going to save him time in the GT. Like, I got to wonder, are we going to see hookshot from both of our runners at this rate? But very nice Trinex kill there for Ninjembro. Yeah, this will be one very welcome heart container. Oh, yeah. Six hearts. The Gamma cannot escape. This with only three. <laughs> Backdoor strats for Gamma here. Very nice on the fire head, now on the ice head. Gonna guarantee himself a one cycle with this strat. Very nicely done. Very Excellent good phase there. two as well, yeah. And Gamma has been just amazing on the three hearts today. Ninjembro opening it up at 50-10. Gamma just a little bit behind, still probably about 30 seconds se separating our runners entering GT. Yeah, Ninjembro Nin 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 will be entering GT just as Gamma Chu leaves TR. And here's Ninjembro hitting up right side of GT. I think this is a hookshot grab, saying I'm going to be able to get across the gap with a hookshot faster than either doing a hover or a bomb jump or the uh, the bounce. So. so yeah, I mean, I think the leads opened up a little bit with Gamma getting that small key on Laser Bridge. So what we're saying about 40 to 50 seconds difference now. That sounds about right. And Gamma also going right side. And there you go, folks. There is the hook shot. <laughs> yeah, and this um, key that Ninjabro picked up was faster than going left for the pot key. And there is our hook shot for Gamma Chu. Ninjembro through the GT big key door, the first of them, at about 52.01. Well, one thing's for certain, this is going to be an exciting finish. Yeah, uh, those silvers will save time on Ganon. Is it enough for be between Lanmo 2 and everything else for Gamma to pass Ninjembro here. Okay, Gamma choose time through that door. It's about 35 seconds right now between our two runners. You know, but Ninjembro feels... having some issues here in G2. It, it feels way longer than 35 seconds. <laughs> Good G5. There. Right, Ninjembro, Ninjembro chose to drink his green potion there, because uh, he's going to use Fire Rod on Lanmo. Oh, and unfortunate, <laughs> we're going to at least see a second cycle here. This could be a good time save for Gamma, but there is the a good early two cycle for Ninjembro on Lanmo. It's going to finish this floor at 53.28. Gamma could really make up some good time here with a one cycle. Nicely done. 
Yeah, real clean. That is a huge time save. Cleaner gauntlet for Gamma. He is going to be entering the next four. 53.49-ish, so we've cut the lead to 21 seconds already. And this is getting really a little more tight than Ninjembro can afford to have, given the Silver's advantage. Oh, that heart was apparently not worth it for Gamachu. He thought about it. Gonna have to get the small key here off the mini helmets. And here we go, Moldorn 2 for Ninjembro. There we go. Nicely done. Okay, entering the bumper hallway at about 55 minutes. Oh, that was a really clean land, uh, Moldorm 2 by Gamachu. I mean, his yeah, Lambo 2 was clean as well. <laughs> Yeah, no, Jimbro getting through the fight good, uh, Gamma just a, a little bit better. Um, and yeah, we're under 20 seconds now, lead for Ninjembro. That was 55-15 for Ninjembro entering the Aga 2 fight. Nice triple. And that's a 16 second difference. Okay, so even on the first one. Oh no. Oh. Oh, he could have salvaged it there, but not quite. Unfortunate. This is going to be close. <laughs> yeah, and that's the thing. That's almost like that could be enough time for an Ingember to kind of have the lead he needs, but I, I don't know. This is, like, everybody talks about that time saved with silvers, and is it enough for uh, Gamma here? We got the one cycle phase one for Ninjembro here on Ganon. Very nice fight here so far. Good one and one. Looks like he's down to one heart. Second difference dropping into Ganon, and uh, yeah, good point. The health situation is going to be important to watch here. Of note, uh, Gamachu still has the green potion, he, so he can just freely spam his cape here. The only issue is, is that that refill is time, so he's going to try to not use it. There's the uh, torch four. glitch. Nice one and one as well for Gamma. There's the first silver. Gamma setting up for a triple. Not quite. Oh, he's got it. There's the fourth silver, and we've still got spins from Ninjembro. This is going to be come from behind as Ninjembro oh gets goodness. his explosions. Wow, GG's to both of our runners. That was an amazing show. Gamma finishing in first place with an official race time of 57.52. Ninjembro not far behind with an official time of 57.58 to give game one or game two, depending on how you look at it, to your mom's favorite rando team, GG's. I do see a team, your moms. Uh, they are now joining us. We are joined by Fear Agent and Gamma Chew. GG's, guys. GG's. Hey, uh, GG's. Never worried. Never <laughs> worried. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't worried myself. No, not one bit. I definitely wasn't sweating out here. <laughs> 
No, this one was uh, really a little bit yikes when uh, I was getting the you know rundown of where we were at after basically hitting go mode. Yeah, I mean, those silvers are at the end. There's, you know, the big one, as we are also joined by Ninjembro, GG. Oh, GG, I literally forgot there was a trace interview. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, no. I, wouldn't have been sh I wouldn't have been shocked if anybody uh, foregoes the interview knowing that you guys have another game coming up. Um, so. But yeah, GG's, dudes. That was a yeah. super close one. <laughs> GG's, Ninjembro. Yeah, I had no idea if I was ahead or behind. I, I just told Fear, like, this is like, within five seconds of each other with a silver difference so i you know just play your game fear was pretty quiet there toward the end just kind of letting me uh do my game as i'm doing the gt climb we kept going back and forth on whether or not i should pick up the powder and it was just like he was just like the lead is shrinking and i'm just like okay i'm not getting the powder and we're where just was, i don't even remember where it was it was on laser bridge so like not uh... far out of the way <laughs> Where did you get the GT small key? Because uh, Fear told me there's one on Laser Bridge. That might be faster than the pod on left side. I'm like, I think it is. And... Oh my god, yeah, we got the pod one. Uh, yeah, pod. Where in pod was it? Right Where side. Was? Yeah, right uh, side. You went to the Bolock side? Yeah. Uh, Wait, did yeah. you go in with two keys? Yeah. Oh my gosh, okay. So, you didn't get the key on Desert? No, we got that one. Oh. Which key yeah, you guys got the same keys. It was just um, Dinjembro went to the back, and then on the way to Helma did right side. Oh, uh, okay. Okay, That's to get that GT small key? GT small, yeah. Yep. Okay. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, that was... Uh... Uh, that was, like crazy <laughs> i don't know what else I, to say <laughs> yeah, i think uh, you guys made the correct call i told fear i'm just leaving and getting going to the mountain to get the boots but he told me you should probably get the book you know that way you're able to combo that together uh get the the pod key that was up there and you know do the mountain basically one trip and i just ended up going back later which i don't think was a correct call where was the book In the uh blind cell yeah yes yeah, so i got the hammer and blind cell and just build Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I went to get the TR small and bumper K. I'm like, well, I'm going to go to Old Man, so I'll just get the key and then mirror to go to the Old Man. Gotcha. Well, and honestly, we think that uh, TR small and bumper might have actually been a faster key given how rough right side TR is without hooking yeah, this one. Hook shot, yeah. yeah. Oh, there was a there was a TR small and bumper ledge. Yes. Oh, yeah. Varnage never. Never even mentioned that one. Uh... Yeah, what did you do after Thieves Town clear? You just save and quit? Uh, yeah, it was just save and quit to head up the mountain. Oh, so, okay. What were all these, all these hearts you got? <laughs> uh, I don't um, remember where, like, some of them were. Well, so... some of them was just, like, so... Some of them were just, like, pieces of heart, like, four pieces of heart just added up to one. But there was another one that was, like, super you... free. So the big thing with there was uh, Ninjembro got his pearl first. So he did a, uh, a when he did his fake flipper to get the mitts off Zora, he set up the water wa or oh. went in and out of the waterfall getting that heart container. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's I a heart like, container and a piece of heart in there. So I was like, yep. yeah, well, like you're not you're gonna do three hearts. We're just gonna, <laughs> see what's gonna happen, and you did. Until I mean, you got a fourth on Trinex. It's all good. Yeah. Yeah, that made me feel a little bit more comfy for a GT climb. I mean, I figured you were trying to actually just do three hearts the whole way. Mm, of course, that was a, a, <laughs> I mean, that was a plan. A, then. If it wasn't a Trinex, he would have. <laughs> any other ones? Yeah. yeah, I think I only found like two heart pieces, but I wasn't really focused on it at that point because I felt comfy with the blue mail and cape and half magic. So I was like, I I think I'm pretty good here. Yeah, this the seat had a lot of just like free, like safeties and stuff like that. I was just like, okay, like. Well, and another thing, like when he was saying that you guys are still on three hearts and you're going to get the fourth, and like I was like, okay, so they're like three heart blue mail, like that's within, like, even like a top runner just like getting bullied in a stupid room, like you're just dead. 
although maybe not with the cape, but I was just like, and then he was like, well, you're getting red mail off, uh, off Moldorm, and I was like, oh, so that means he's getting red mail off Moldorm, so oh, that, that, like, potential, like, slight health advantage is just completely negated. We kind of actually lucked into Silvers a little bit because it was so early, I was still trying to piece everything together. Um, I saw that as our first bow, so I was like, where are you going to get that? And then I was like, oh, wait, Saha has the other bow. <laughs> so we got silvers like mad early. Yeah, I Yeah, that you, that right there is like the difference. <laughs> yeah, did you not consider that yourself, Ninja Bro? Like when you went to get ear I assume you got the mirror early. Um Yeah, so when when we were in Eastern the second time, he's like, Well, your silvers are at um uh, the big key chest, and I was like, oh my god, that's like just far enough away that I don't think it's worth doing, especially like, because at that point, like, he was already like watching the restream and like kind of figuring out where we were. And he was just like, like, it seemed like right on the fence, but it was like the, the lead sounded like big enough that like, you know, getting them was not worth it. But then, like, literally, like, I had six seconds of error in Gauntlet, and, like, I had a, I had a two-cycle Lambo 2, and I had, like, a terrible Gauntlet 3, and, like, had those not happened, like, we win the race. <laughs> like, that's how close it was, like, through that part of the game. Yeah, uh, Fear was telling me uh, the situation, because uh, he, he stayed quiet until I opened my mouth. I basically finished my Gauntlet, like, okay, what's the situation? Uh, he messed up Blanmos 2, I don't think you got one cycle, I don't think his G2 was the greatest, but you're definitely ahead right now with Silvers uh, to consider. Yeah, I'd say where it was was that, you know, it was, I, I want to say G2 and Lanmo were the big ones. And again, and then, time on Aga too. And uh, that was where it got a little bit, con the question mark re-entered, because I was like, I think it was 15 seconds between the two of you entering Aga 2. And we knew that was well within silver's advantage and then Agate 2 was a little off the rails and we're like uh this is gonna get interesting yeah oh, was, was your Agate 2 terrible uh, uh, yes oh i got i got two three one so i was like oh, i feel pretty good about that yeah he had one extra cycle i do think it was right for you guys to skip silvers at the end too by the way yeah like, I, I think like I even think even with even without hindsight, I think it was the right play. Yeah, I think that's the right play. I don't think you go get silver there. Like, I, th I think if we still have like Meyer ahead of us, it's worth grabbing them just because it makes uh, uh, Vitrius so much easier. But like at that point, we were like finishing Eastern and going up the mountain. It's like yeah, probably not worth doing. Also, Yo Barnage is here. What's up, dude? Hey. Hey, uh, GG's Barnage. This is yeah. cool with all with the key placements, like for Pod. Yeah. Pod in particular, I, because you have to, you need all. There's so much stuff in there, and you got you need three keys. There's one key there. Total Rock was also a little bit tricky, um, I, and then like the green pendant for Eastern Big was like super frustrating. I yeah, I don't think I had Pod. That, that was actually part of what caused us to go right for that for that in tower key was like i didn't quite have my pod stuff figured out like as he was approaching pod so i was like i know three key is gonna work but how do i route and then i was like we need this hook shot so i feel like we need again it's tower small and i was like oh well we want to go right side to conserve a key and so you're gonna get the ganon's tower small right yeah and then i realized like oh you don't need to conserve a key you can just open the center door but I'd already loaded that into Ninjembra's what you're going to do in this dungeon. And right. so then, like, after he had all the necessary stuff, he ended up going to the right side, which is, like, totally on me. So. Also, so we... when the Moon Pearl is not just available, like, freely, and you have to figure <laughs> out how to get it, I think is also, because it's one of those early items that you need. And so I'm trying to figure out, like, wait a second, hammers in the Dark World, and then they're we need the shovel and then we need to go to, go to castle tower to get the shovel it's like oh crap and then <laughs> yeah that was, that was really fun he's just like yeah. oh yeah so you're, you're going to go to hyrule castle but like not 
to like do Hyrule Castle. Yeah. You're just you're just going to go do the first chest so you can get your shovel. And I'm like, what the hell do I need the shovel for? And, then, <laughs> and he's just like, oh yeah, your moon pearls at dig spot. And I'm like, oh yeah. that's that's just super cool. <laughs> and then we're lucky with Zora being required how much free money there was early on too. I think that was really nice. Oh yeah. yeah. Did you did you guys uh, get the three hundred and mini moldarm and uh, what was that? Yes. I don't blind said yeah. That yeah. one's like so free. Yeah, and also I hope you guys enjoyed my little uh, close call in the mountain the first time going up there. Uh, yeah, we were uh, oh. saying how uh, I... <laughs> the, the clover activation right uh, at the. <laughs> yeah, so I have no idea. I'm like. I told Fear I think I'm dead because I think there's usually a delay after you equip the cape before you're able to use it. And I'm able to use it immediately. I'm like, oh my gosh, it worked. And then Fear <laughs> uh, sees it afterwards because uh, I don't have stream here on my uh, on Discord, so he can't see live. Uh, but he yep. when he caught up I, with a delay, like, oh holy crap, dude! <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that death right there would have you know would have done it. Like all these little things that you know, little deaths that would have happened here or there. Yeah. Would have definitely swung it his way, but yeah, right there, that one was, you know, I thought for sure I'm dead. I'm dead. I mean, close, close race, close race like this on any number of things either way could have really turned the tide. So, yeah, I mean, if uh, this is a preview of how good the race is that I'm going to get to watch in a little bit here, then I'm really <laughs> excited for it. I, I mean, there's always little things like you got dead rocked on your way to to turtle oh, rock, yeah. right? Like that yeah. was time. Like, I got I got like, dead rocked like twice this seat, I think, in like bad ways. Oh wow, the dead rocks uh, decided to just you know get out of the way for me today. So yeah. you know, there was one that I just had to wait for because of its location, or maybe that was in a practice earlier. I don't remember, but there was definitely one that like I had. To yeah, just when you were active, when screen. you were opening Turtle Rock, we definitely had that one where you had to scroll the screen back to the left. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's a it, wonder, wonderful race, guys. It was, it, was, it was a lot of fun to, to be a part of. Yeah, that was a super yeah. cool one. And I'm also, like, glad that it was, like, as close as it was because, you know, you know, Gamma and Fear won. But, you know, in all of uh, their, their trash talking over the last 24 <laughs> hours, they were talking how it's going to be a complete blowout and they can't believe oh, it. Oh, my God. Them, so, like, uh, I just thought it was going to be a win. And it was a win. A a so uh, I, I, I remember something about winning by approximately 455. So yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> So. Yeah, not not gonna lie. I like felt okay if they really had a that much of a difference in the async three round. Maybe you know it shouldn't be that difficult. But you know, as you know, we're just playing through this. He's like, "Damn, dude, I can't tell who's ahead." I, you know, then that's kind of like, you know, like, damn, like you know, just play your game and hope for the best. But that was yeah. definitely my yeah. mm -hmm. yeah, at the end, I was just like, just play and we'll see how it uh, shakes out when we get to GT. Because I'm trying to like. Trying to figure out, oh, well, they got to go get the key. We still got to do this. We gotta do that. It's like trying to figure out what, how, you know, the difference between it. And so, as soon as we like get into GT, then we can start timing things a little bit closer. And, uh, you know, we were definitely needed um, Gamma to play really well through through the climb, which he did. So, yeah. GGs, good luck on the next race. And, yeah. Uh, maybe sometime in the playoffs, I get to actually play Rando. So we'll see. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Later this week against uh, against oh, Barnage boy. and Maniacal, obviously. Uh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. All right, later, yes. guys. Yeah, GG. <laughs> this guy's gonna get set up for the next one. Yep, yeah, understandable. Um, yeah. GG's again, and uh, thanks all for doing commentary tracking. Appreciate it, and good luck to you, uh, Ninjembo. Game two. Yeah, thanks all as well for doing the comms and everything, and see y'all in a few minutes. Awesome. So yeah, uh, we've you know this is of course <clears throat> going to be the end of this game uh, between the two teams for pilot spoiler. Uh, but the second game or game one <coughs> coming up in just about thirty five minutes. Uh, it's going to be Gamachu and Ninjembro are racing again, but their partner has changed as it's going to be Gamachu with Shireen and Ninjembro with Maniacal. And once again, co-op all dungeons. That'll be right here on Speed Gaming in, as I said, about 35 minutes start time. So those guys are getting all set. If you're looking for a race to watch like almost immediately and you haven't had enough of Pilot Spoiler yet, 
coming up in 10 minutes over on SG4. We got game one between the Pugs, perfect unadulterated gaming squad versus the Bratwurst Buddies. It's going to be Matt7898 versus Teto, um, Shady Force, and Clear Mouse on the commentary. Uh, I don't see the list of pilots. I'm guessing Matt will be piloted by Dante. And then Teto. Uh, who was the pilot there? Skelly probably will be piloting for um, the Bratwurst Buddies. So. Then over on, at 210, over on SG2, we're going to have the first game between to Infinity and Pagog versus the Fendrana Drifters. Also going to be an AD co op. That'll be Relkin and Humbug versus Jet and Wall Kicks. Mayan Diem and Zafakil on the call there. So those two races coming up very quickly. And of course, if you want more of this matchup, that second game between these two teams here in about 35 minutes. Well, uh, thank you to our runners for putting on a truly excellent show today. That was a blast to watch. Uh, thank you to my co commentator, Radical Sniper 99. Uh, thanks to Link Force, our tracker and MVP. And thank you everyone for joining us. We hope you enjoyed the show.